Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. Let's talk about bridge designs. You know I am a fan of having two bridges on my saddle. Refer to my website, jrbtreeclimbing.com. Refer to the page on bridge designs, and you'll see everything I have published thus far. This season, I'm going to be using a bridge design that incorporates the use of the Longhorn Agile Friction Hitch. The Longhorn Agile, also here on my lifeline, is simply a fantastic friction hitch because it's got this one-hand auto-tending operation with no metal. And it's so strong and so stable, and it can be controllably released under load just with just one hand. And the same is true here on my bridge. If I wanted to lengthen my bridge with one hand, I can do so in a controlled fashion even with no footing. It gives us a lot of opportunities for fine-tuning our position quietly and at that special moment where we might be trying to get a shot opportunity as a hunter. Features of this bridge design. Well, first of all, it's very long. It's longer than we actually need it to be to, as a bridge because I want my bridge to be long enough to act as a set of suspenders such that if I'm walking miles into the woods and my saddle bags are loaded the bridge isn't going anywhere it's effectively strapped onto me with a set of suspenders again it's one hand adjustable to make it shorter or make it longer the bridge fails safe what do I mean by that I mean that if my friction hitch were to fail completely it's tied to the bridge loop. It's tied to the bridge loop and therefore can't go anywhere. It's got a no metal design with the exception of course of the carabiner itself and it cinches in place on my bridge loop. It's put, I can put it exactly in the location I want for optimal comfort on both sides and it will stay there. And although this is covered in a separate video, the short bridge which uses my Blake's Hitch Tensioner design is weaved inside of the bridge connections on both sides. So I'm showing this to you as a system, but today we're just gonna focus on the actual long bridge. Okay, let's show you how to tie it. Okay, you are looking down at my left bridge loop, my left hand over my left bridge loop. Let's start in this position and let's talk about what we need to create this bridge. And before we even get started, I need to insist that you're 100% comfortable in tying the knots that I demonstrate here today before you attempt anything like this. I am using eight millimeter rope to create this bridge and I need eight feet of it. Now, if you're taller than me, you might need just a little bit more. So why don't we say that we need your height plus two feet. We also need eight feet of six millimeter cord. This is Sterling TRC. We're going to need a carabiner for our bridge. This happens to be the Petzl William Ball, but I like to use a swivel carabiner and that's important because it has a captive eye and I'll need to make sure I put this carabiner on while I'm building my bridge because I can't take it off once it's constructed. I also have, just out of, out of view, I've got a measuring tape to get some approximate measurements on some of my working ends. So here's my rope. I'm gonna take about 21 inches of working end. And with that 21 inches, I'm going to put that 21 inch point right in the center of my bridge loop. And I'm going to go around once. So that's one complete turn around the bridge loop. That's a second complete turn around the bridge loop and a third complete turn around the bridge loop. I have settled on three as optimal. If you want your bridge to be a little bit easier to move in the bridge loop, well then you might only want two, but I find one inadequate. And with those two additional turns, I'm now going to finish what would have been a poacher's knot. Please see my dedicated video on the scaffold poachers and overhand noose knots. I find that two is adequate and so that'll be the poachers. So watch what I do here. I put this over and around and then working back towards the bridge loop a second time. And then I take my working end and pass it under two strands. 
That, this is effectively a poacher's knot, but I've just got two extra turns here. And I'll work hard to get, first ensure I've got an adequate tail here of several inches. And I'm gonna give this a really good pull because this doesn't need to come off. If this ever needs to come off, that'll be no problem to get it off. But, and now I'm gonna get that little bit of slack out of here. I'm just gonna work this back. And immediately, that sets in place. That's really got a firm bite on my bridge loop. If I wanna move it, I can break this. Do you see how easy that was to break? I can break this, and I can slide it to a different position. Slide it to a different position. And when I get it where I want it, cinch it in place. And for me, that's typically in the middle of my bridge loop. Okay, let's switch sides. Okay, you are now looking down at my right bridge loop, kind of a bird's eye view, my right hand and my right thigh. Because I'm using a carabiner with a captive eye, I've got to make sure I don't forget that. So first things first, let's get that carabiner, let's put it on the bridge and, and move it over to the left side. And now let's get started with the Longhorn Agile Friction Hitch. Please see the prior videos and those in the video description to ensure you've got all the details as I don't expect to be taking you through every detail that's been covered in prior videos. We've got these tools in our toolbox and now we're simply getting them out to use them. In order to start a Longhorn Agile Hitch, we start by creating a Longhorn. I'm going to measure approximately 12 inches with these doubled working ends. And I realize you're seeing this in a transverse orientation, but I am forming a longhorn hitch. You've got to have this in your arsenal already. See my video for tying the longhorn hitch. It's the foundation for the longhorn agile. I've taken time and detail to show you these knots in the prior videos. Those tools are in our toolbox. We're now simply engaging them. But whenever tying the longhorn, I'm going to make sure all four ends that can be tightened are tightened so it's nice and snug and, and there are healthy long tails on the longhorn. And now begin the process of creating the longhorn agile on the rope. If you refer to the length specifications page on the JRB tree climbing website, and don't be surprised, I need to do this once in a while myself, you'll see that for the Longhorn Agile friction hitch with six millimeter cord on eight millimeter rope, I use that 12 inch working end for the Longhorn, and I use about a 17.5 inch working end for my first loop. So again, just a review on the Longhorn Agile. I'm going to take the left loop and I'm going to lengthen it. I'm going to lengthen it. And here on my measuring tape, just out of your view, I'm going to measure out about 17.5 inches. Okay, so here's my 17.5 inch loop. And I'll do my best to stay in view here. And we're simply creating a Longhorn agile hitch on this eight millimeter rope in the same fashion you've seen many times it's just transverse orientation here one two three four and when I go around the fifth time I start bringing it down across the starting point and around the rope once and twice and I've got just just a nub there that I could just get my finger through so that 17.5 worked perfectly I now take the other loop and pop it through there. So 
I've done it. I've created a longhorn agile hitch with these two insanely long loops on the end. But let's let's make sure that we're comfortable with it. I'm just testing it here, popping in and out of your field of view. Looks good. Now, here comes the magic. And this is a little involved. Please ensure that you get this right if you're going to try this bridge. I am going to shorten this loop, the supply loop, as small as, as possible. In fact, I'll grab I'll grab a marker here and I'll put it inside that loop as a spacer. So I want it to be really small. I only want this loop big enough that I can thread a bite through it. It's quite small. Just as big as my magic marker. Okay, with that in place. I'm going to orient it this way. Here's my bridge loop. Here's my bridge loop. You can see where the marker is. These are my two tails coming out of the original long one. That's my marker sticking straight up. I'm going to take that long loop and here's my bridge loop and I'm going to put it around and I am going to form, in order for this to hold in place, I'm going to form a clove hitch with this entire doubled bite. I will start. I'm going to go real slow here because you probably never tied a clove hitch in this orientation. I'm going to start by wrapping down towards the bottom. Then go under and towards me. Then around, and then on the way back up, it has to pass under here one more time. I'm going to repeat that for you because that's probably the trickiest part of this whole operation. I've just formed a clove hitch. I've just formed a clove hitch with two strands. Let's do it again. There's the Longhorn Agile. Here's the supply loop as small as possible with the carabiner right by the two working ends. Here's the long loop. I'm going to put it around my bridge loop. I'm very close to it. I'm not leaving any extra room there. And with the first turn I go down towards my butt and now bring it up towards my chest around a second time under the bottom and the third time to form a clove hitch you've got to pass under that double strand we just put down there that's a clove hitch okay now we've got to we've got to connect this to this that time I removed my I removed the magic marker and I pass this bite through. Just pop it through there. It's nice and tight. I'll get that as snug as I can. And now I'm gonna form a stopper here. I'm gonna form a simply an overhand knot as as closely as I can to this assembly. I'm making sure there's no extra twists and turns. Now I have formed this dozens of times and tested it, but this would be the juncture where I would attach myself to a tree and make sure I'm comfortable with it, its performance. You can see here I am adjusting that Longhorn Agile. I'm making sure there's not an excessive amount of room here underneath this because I want this as close to my bridge loop as possible. But it, it 
it works for me the first time every time as long as I'm very judicious with the amount of slack inside of this. Now you recall I stated in the past that this loop here needs to be toggled somehow just to ensure that if ever it were to pop through here it can't, it can't go anywhere and we don't want to use metal we're just going to use the end of our rope for that the end of our rope is going to be cinched onto our bridge loop we're going to simply make sure it passes through here such that it serves two purposes so I'll take the end of my bridge I'll bring it up through that loop and now I'm going to effectively attach it to my bridge loop. And I prefer to do it this way. Instead of having it float up here, I like it cinched down. I'll capture, you can see what I'm doing. I'm capturing the loop from the Longhorn Agile and the bridge loop together. And here, I'll form a poachers. Need about a foot of slack for that. So this will test your knowledge of these knots, right? We've, we've been practicing them for years. We've got the poacher's knot, we've got the clove hitch, and we've tied them and we've used them, but it sure is easier to use them on a carabiner than it is in this orientation. Okay, let's go test it out. Okay, so this is the closest tree I had handy. I've got my lifeline on it. I'm gonna connect my bridge to it. I'm gonna shorten it carefully load it. We never want to climb on anything until we've tested it. And so this would be a good time to give it a little bit more force than we might ordinarily. Let's adjust it. Let's make it shorter. Let's make it longer. Simulate a short fall. Double check my points of connection both on the left bridge loop and on the right bridge loop my ability to shorten it, my ability to lengthen it, and then let's check how difficult it would be to change the position here. Again, I just break this a little bit and I'm able to slide it. I'm able to slide it with just the right amount of resistance. And on the other side, I've got that clove hitch. I can just kind of wiggle this a bit and shake it and I can change that position. But what I really like about this is it holds in place. I like mine set in the middle of my bridge loops. You'll want to pay careful attention to make sure that you've got that loop where I had the magic marker nice and small. Now I realize that this is a varsity knot tying uh, exercise and I'm not saying it's for everyone. You might prefer the adjustable bridge that is on your saddle today but you're going to see this bridge in my climbing videos and I wanted to make sure that I showed you what I'm using. In fact I've been using this and I've been testing it for multiple months just to make sure I'm comfortable with it. Next, simply refer to the other video for the Blake's Hitch Tensioner Bridge Design, and I'll show you how I weave that inside of this for the complete system of two redundant bridges. Thank you guys as always.